Uh, we're out on a call on a 9230 tractor and the customers called in with a few codes that I thought this would be pretty interesting for you. So he's getting an ECU code of a 94.04 and then a also a 102.04 and a 100.04 and then a 3510.04. So we're going to dig into this and jump into this a little bit and uh, show you what we come up with here. Um, we're going to start the tractor up and verify his problem. So one of the problems that's kind of causing him to be really hesitant to run the tractor with these codes is one of those codes is for his engine oil pressure. And man, just a quick uh, tech tip. If you've got an engine that your oil pressure gauge is not working right, I would really recommend that you not run that tractor until you surely uh, verify your, your oil pressure. We're gonna start this tractor up real quick. Let's see what we have here. So immediately when we start the tractor up on the side, co side console display here, we've got a 94.04. And if we hit okay, we've got a 35.10.04. Okay. And then if we check it out up here on our corner post, we do not have any engine oil pressure. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut this tractor off and there's our oil pressure code. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off and we'll take a quick look at that in Service Advisor. One thing that we found here in Service Advisor when we read through the diagnostic steps was to turn the ignition off, engine off, disconnect one of the related sensor components listed below. The engine oil pressure sender, the intake manifold air pressure sender, and the low pressure fuel pressure sensor and then ignition on and refresh codes and, and it's asking us has the 3510.04 moved to the stored list okay so basically what we're doing here is testing all of those three components okay and we're talking about those three sensors there the engine oil pressure intake manifold and low fuel pressure so we're going to do that real quick see what we come up with so we're walking through the service advisor steps here and we unplugged all of the three sensors the engine oil pressure the intake air manifold pressure and the low pressure fuel pump sensor and it's asking was the code the 3510.04 still active and it was okay so if it was it led us back down to step number six in service advisor which said ignition off engine off disconnect ecu connectors j1 and j3 which is the black face connector and the blue face connector on our ecu ignition on engine off refresh codes and it's asking is the 3510.04 still active okay if it is still active then it means that we have an ecu failure okay if it is not active anymore then we have a wiring problem, okay, which is gonna lead us to step number seven. Okay, so we are going to unplug the ECU and see what we got, so stay tuned. We're on the back of the cab of the tractor here. This is our level 14 ECU engine control unit. Um, this is gonna be your J1 and your J3 connector, I believe, and it's got these anti-tamper tags on there that will not allow you to unplug the ECU okay so basically we're just gonna have to cut those off so that we can unplug the ECU and 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 then run through the diagnostic to verify our problem so here is our engine controller on the back of the cab we've got our J1 black face ECU connector disconnected we've got our J3 blue face ECU connector disconnected and now we're gonna turn the key on at the same time we're going into tech mode Okay, I just like to go into tech mode because it's a little bit faster to get to the ECU. So we're gonna hold in on our set switch and our setting switch at the same time as we turn the key on, okay? We'll turn the key on, and if you're looking at the display window, okay, that's gonna put us in tech mode. So we're gonna go down and find our ECU. Check it. Okay, we're looking at our ECU codes. So we're gonna go down one click back code check it okay now obviously we're going to have a lot of codes because we've got the j1 
and the J3 connectors at the ECU disconnected. Okay, but what we're looking for is to see if 3510.04 code is still active. Okay, so we're scrolling through there one at a time. We got codes. Okay, right there it says, do you want to clear codes? That means that the only codes that are active are the ones that are related to the connectors that we have disconnected. So the 3510.04 code is actually gone, okay? And if that code is gone, what that means is, is that we do have a wiring problem that does exist, okay? And so we're gonna carry on to the next step and see where we end up. Really do not see any visual wiring problems on these sensors on the engine. So we're looking at the intake air pressure sensor right here on the back of the engine on the top of the intake. And the wires look fairly good. The insulation on the wiring still intact, okay? So we went around to the other side of the engine here on the right hand side. And we're looking at the low pressure fuel sensor here and we really didn't see anything wrong with the wiring there. And then we're also looking at the engine oil pressure sending unit here, if you can see that. And we didn't really see anything wrong with the connector there. Now it does look like the customer has replaced the engine oil pressure sending unit and looks like they've put a new connector on the engine oil pressure sending unit. So um, I guess we really need to verify those wires and make sure they're in the correct terminal pin out on the connector. And maybe that's causing us a problem, I don't know. Uh, we're gonna check that pin out on that connector, but then we're also just gonna take another step here and we're gonna check our five volt power supply to these sensors using a multimeter. And so stay tuned, we're gonna check it actually here at the oil pressure sending unit. Then we're also going to backtrack a little bit, check it at our low pressure fuel sensor, and then also up at our intake air manifold pressure. I got Caleb here helping me. Wave at him, Caleb. Hey. <laughs> and we're going to check the voltage here, our five volt power supply to these sensors. So what do we have there on the low pressure fuel? We've got one point, about one and a half volts, okay? Go to your oil pressure. Right okay, about the same, about a 1.1 1 .1 and a half volt. Okay, intake air pressure. About the same, about a volt and a half. Okay, so we should be seeing five volts right now on that sensor power. So I'm pretty sure that we've got our sensor power wire is grounding out somewhere. Okay, so go ahead and leave that on one of those. Uh, leave that plugged in. We'll go around and move the harness around a little bit. Okay, if you can watch that, I'm gonna go to the other side of the engine okay. and move the harness around, see if your voltage comes back. I've got my voltmeter set up here where you can take a look at that because what we found was when we moved this main harness around here at the back of the engine, then our voltage would come back to five volts every once in a while. So. I'm gonna move that harness around. And as you can see, there's your five volts. And I'm basically just pulling up on this harness. And as soon as I pull up, I've got voltage. When I let it go, I lose my voltage, okay? So our problem is gonna be in this main harness, which is really, really difficult to find, okay? But we have verified that we do have a five volt sensor power supply problem, okay? And so we're gonna spend a little time and chase that down and probably end up running a new five volt power wire or see if we can find the bad spot in the harness, okay? Whichever, okay? Now keep in mind on these 30 series four wheel drive tractors, um, you cannot change just the engine harness, okay? The harness runs all the way through the engine and all the way to the back of the tractor. And so it's a little bit easier probably to go ahead and try to find that problem and fix that wiring issue or overlay a new wire, whichever is the easiest. It is 
getting it really hot out here in southwest Oklahoma today. Uh, we're still working on this 9230 with the uh, codes for the low fuel pressure sensor and the manifold air pressure sensor and then also no engine oil. Um, we found that we had a 5 volt sensor power problem on sensor power number 2 which comes from the ECU back over to these three sensors. Um, and so we couldn't really chase that down because there's so many wires in that harness and they're so hard to get to underneath that cab and down around the frame that we just went ahead and cut that circuit out, ran a new 5416 circuit from the ECU out to our sensors. And that eliminated our problem. And so now the tractor's running and we've got engine oil pressure and pretty well uh, eliminate all of our codes in that circuit that drives that five volt sensor power. And so uh, tech tip of the day is uh, don't get caught up in service advisor too long when you're chasing a wiring problem. Go ahead and go to those sensors and check that five volt power supply to those sensors and make sure that um, you have your five volt power there because there is a splice in that circuit that we found along the back side of the engine and that's where that five volt power comes from the back of the cab over to from the ecu over underneath the cab through the main harness and then over to those three sensors and uh so keep that in mind when you're chasing those circuits that uh you don't get too hung up on uh where that splice is at try to figure that out ahead of time so that you know that you have a five volt power supply to all three of your sensors so uh, Larry the Tractor Guy signing out. Hey guys, check out Larry the Tractor Guy videos here, other videos here, subscribe here, and buy all your John Deere parts here. We'll make it work. I think we're gonna have to make we'll it. We'll make it work. Come on, let's go. We need to make you need some bloopers. Y'all already burning me out. Some bloopers. He's sitting in the sun over here, man.